Oh man, such excitement on our first night at Anchor. <laughs> what a rookie mistake, man. We screwed it up good. <laughs> No one at the marina office would give us a clear answer on where they wanted us to park our truck and trailer for the next four months, so we just picked a spot that looked somewhat out of the way. We noticed once we got here that the marina yard wasn't exactly that secure of a place. We thought it would be a good idea to cover the truck with large tarps to try to prevent someone from messing with our stuff while we were away. We had to go to several stores in town to find big enough tarps that would cover the truck and the canoe on top. Most stores had similar ones priced at around $50 or more. We were extremely lucky to find these tarps at Walmart for $7 each. We couldn't believe it. We're ready to go. Let's go get the keys. Just finished up tying up the truck. We're exhausted, it's hot, but we're ready to get out of here. So off we go. And hopefully we're not stuck in the mud too bad. Last night, Randall and I drove to a nearby beach and found that there were sailboats anchored in the bay. It looked like the perfect spot for us to spend our first night anchored. We were able to get out of our slip without any problems and we're soon making our way up of the marina. So I just put in our speed transducer and it's it's super weird cuz you pull the plug out and water just sprays out like like a hose right your face but you can also see bright blue daylight right out the bottom of the boat because you just put a hole in the boat that's that big around so you pull this one out it sprays as quick as you can you put the other plug in with the wheel on the bottom this one's just a plug so you don't damage it when you're working on the boat or launching so I just stuck the paddle wheel in so now we can see how fast we're going through the water <laughs> it kind of freaks me out like you know it's not a big deal you know you can plug the hole again but Still nerve wracking. We're in 11.3, no, point four. <laughs> We're in 11 feet of water with a five foot keel drop. So that's 11 from the bottom of the keel. So it's 11 plus a five. Oh. And we are in a one point. <laughs> Noisy radio. About two knots current. First anchorage, a beautiful little spot right off of Sandy Beach uh, by Fort Pierce. And I'm about to go up the mast to string a line so that we can raise our cruising pendant, quarantine flag or a country flag. Uh, so I just gotta pop up the mast a little bit, run a line, and uh, we'll be good to go. Oh man, I've never run this thing. I gotta read. You would think, after all the time I've spent with this, I'd know how it works. But that's not the case. Right. Okay. I think I just turn it on. Honestly.
That's all. Oh, that's the bypass. This is a simple machine. Okay, so I just turn this on. It starts pumping. It's gonna have to take a minute. It's got something going on there, huh? Oh yeah, come look at this. So it's pulling in salt water now. So the salt water comes up this hose and then through the filter and then over here into the main uh, membrane housing. And from there, um, it gets separated into about two thirds brine water, which is still salty, actually extra salty, and about one third clean fresh water that's separated from that. And they, uh, they go out two different pipes, both into the sink, how uh, we've got it set up. So see the one little, uh, little pipe coming out right there and then the other one right here will be fresh. It takes a minute or so after it starts coming out. It'll be salty at first and then when it turns uh, turns clear. Then there's we switch a lever. You can actually have it keep coming out there and just like put a glass of water under it. Or I've got a second hose that comes out here. We'll switch a lever and that one's long enough. We can put it down into a bucket or a, a water bottle or something like that to actually fill something. So for now we're just waiting until this thing over here fills up right here slowly pumping water into the uh, the filter housing let it go for just a minute and then this <laughs> put the thing behind the toilet <laughs> put it with drinking oh nuts <laughs> Fill it with drinking water. This is what your mom was afraid of. All right, here's the test. This is our first bottle of water maker water. Hopefully, it doesn't taste like an old water bottle that's been in the trunk of your car all summer. Here we go. It's really good, actually. It tastes like fresh bottled water from the store. It's awesome. I want to taste. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of scared though. <laughs> yeah. It's surprisingly good, isn't it? This came from the ocean. This came from the ocean. That's crazy. Ten minutes ago, that was floating under our keel. That's really good. That is, I mean, huh? it has a taste to it, but. It's not a bad taste. Not a bad taste. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. Okay. What are you what... having for dinner tonight, Randall? Well, I've got a little concoction going on. I've got some corn tortillas with cheese, beans, and hot sauce. And then Kinsey had mashed potatoes. So I'm putting them on here. Kinsey and I don't really share a similar taste in food. So, uh, that is one weird, <laughs> but it's really good. This is my second batch. So this is the fresh water that comes out of the hose. As you can see, it really isn't a lot of water all at once, <laughs> just little trickles. So it takes a really long time to fill up a large jug like this one here. This jug here takes about a solid two hours to fill up. And it just is amazing at how little water comes out. Well, we have our first issue. Our brand new Power Survivor 40 water maker by Catadyne is leaking both inboard and outboard of the main pump body. And uh, so it's leaking salt water all over the V-berth as we try to use it. We're basically out of water. The marina we launched at didn't have potable water, so we started out with nothing, and now we have about two gallons, and it's broken. There's something magical about being on your own sailboat anchored in a beautiful place watching a majestic sunset. This is finally what our trip was supposed to be like.
It's about 12.30 in the middle of the night. I woke up because the boat was feeling like it was riding a little funny on the anchor line. Mm -hmm. We'd gotten the, uh, the anchor road wrapped around the, not the rudder. We thought it was around the rudder, but it was, it was wrapped around the keel. Yeah, it was wrapped around the keel. It probably wrapped around the keel right at slack tide or just after. And then the current started running pretty strong again. Just about two knots of current, which is pretty significant. And <laughs> so I woke up and the boat's like dead sideways to the current at two knots. And like heeling over in the current and everything. And I went out there. We couldn't release more rope. We couldn't pull it in. There was Even if we could have, there wasn't any way to get it off. I didn't set it with a, a weight or a kellet of any kind, which looking back I should have. Looking even further back, I should have brought a kellet, which I left in Oregon on accident. Uh, so we weren't really sure what to do. Should we slip the anchor, try and start the motor and catch us while we drifted onto the shoals, which are just downstream? Um, we decided to let out our second anchor. Um, and try and take from up the back. from the back yeah again that was not smart we should have put it off the bow but we were like pitching dead sideways so i wasn't really thinking uh about that so the problem was we set it off the, the back my intention was to set it off the stern of the boat and uh, release the pressure on the main road uh to the point where we could drop it and uh, but we ran out of we ran out of length on the temporary road on the short anchor right when the boat was pitched dead sideways in the current and both roads were far tight. Is that when we were like tipping sideways? Yeah, like... and, yeah so we were really, I mean we were heeling over like 20 degrees. Then we got um, the temporary line stuck on the cleat i accidentally had an extra wrap around so then i couldn't even uncleat it while we were trapped sideways though we were able to release the main anchor road completely hook it with the boat hook drag it back we up from the other side it, and then yeah and then restring it to the bow and cut the aft anchor line it was a mess so it was a, a fiasco so but. now we did tie a buoy to that anchor though, so now it's floating back behind us. Yeah. Now we just need to figure out how to get it. Yeah, the back. tide's still running pretty strong and it's kind of over by the shallow area. We don't really, really want to let the, the boat Yeah, back right now that we're far. sitting in five feet of water. Yeah, shallow enough already, especially with the tide going out. It could be even shallower here in a little while. We have three more hours. Till slack tide. Yeah, can you say maybe in three hours of slack tide we can motor back there with the dinghy and pick it up or something. But I'm exhausted. Oh man, such excitement on our first night at anchor. <laughs> what a rookie mistake, man. We screwed it up good. <laughs> Lost one anchor already. <laughs> it's not even rough out there yet. No, it's calm. But... It is a little trickier anchoring in this much current, reversing like that. Ah, uh, we just didn't think it through enough. We're still new at this. We don't know what we're doing yet. But we're learning really fast. <laughs> yeah.